So thank you very much for coming. I'm Rio Tasawada. This talk is multi-cluster observability with service mesh, and that is a lot of moving parts. So before going into the details, I want to go through some agenda, which yeah shows up. Uh, so we'll start with the introduction about myself, about Upsider, and about this talk, and what this talk is about, and what this talk is not about. And before going into so much details, we would also look at observability with service mesh, what it looks like with standard setup, which is just single cluster, and then we would go into a multi-cluster setup. And we would go into multi-cluster challenges before going to quick review of each project that I would be using, and, quick, um, and then solutions and demo. And after the demo, I'll have a bit of recap, alternatives to consider, and other considerations that I couldn't touch in this, uh, in this talk. So firstly, introduction of myself. So I'm Ryota. Um, I'm platform engineer at Upsider. I'm passionate about learning and sharing all things technology. It's the first time speaking in person, in person event, and it's the first time in person KubeCon for me. It's nerve wracking as hell, but hopefully things go okay. Um, I have a son and two cats, and you can find me at RYTSWD, which is my full name without vowel, and you can find me in usual places. And about Upside Up briefly, uh, it's a fintech startup. Uh, we are providing B2B payment solutions. Uh, we are adopted by 15,000 plus companies. Uh, the headquarter is based in Japan, Tokyo, Japan, and the business is mainly in Japan, but the remote team is all around the world. I myself am based in London. We have a few folks with us um, today here, and we have been cloud native end users from early 2019. And we use multi-cloud and multi-cluster system for the production setup. So that's why I wanted to give this talk. And we are hiring, so if you wanted to know more about us, about us please come to me. So about this talk, so a little bit of prerequisites. So I want you to at least have a basic idea about observability, what it is about. OK, it's about metrics, traces, logs, and then service mesh, what service mesh can provide. It tr provides traffic management, security, but this talk is about observability. So the talk is going to be mainly about observability metrics aspect and also service mesh in terms of observability. And this talk is about, so I'm just going to talk about that, service mesh behaviors and multi-cluster scenarios, observability challenges, our learning at Upsider, and it is a lot of moving parts. And this talk is not about Istio Deep Dive, and it's not a Prometheus deep dive either. And there is no silver bullet. I had a couple of questions that I wanted to ask after this slide or a few other slides before, later. Who uses service mesh or who has used service mesh in some way for testing? OK, that's great. Um, about like 50%. Who uses service mesh in production? Oh, like higher hands, that's, that's amazing. Um, but probably like 40% or so. Who has multi-cluster environment? It doesn't have to be service mesh or like just multi-cluster environment. Quite a few. I'm not sure if I can give you anything new in this talk, but um, who uses Istio? Who doesn't use Istio? OK, uh, I'm, I'm really confused what the audience is like. <laughs> it's like so many Istio folks, so many non-Istio folks, but I hope I can show the slide and tell you something about service mesh and observability. But um, what else I can talk about? Maybe a bit about myself, a bit my, about my company. Um, am I a cat? Did, did I hear that? Sorry? No, by my cat. No, you know what you do. You know, <laughs> sorry. Do you want to know more about my cats? Uh, my cats are seven-year-old, I think, six-year-old, um, domestic British cats. I guess that's something that I'm very proud of. I, I have an Instagram for them. I never use. Um, so what can I talk about <laughs> without a slide? Um, all right, back to it. Uh, so it's not silver bullet setup. I want to just show one, uh, one solution or a few solution cases. And it's about you know just understanding what, what challenges there will be. And you can find, I just created this repository, so I hope this is available. But um, the GitHub repository is my username, RYTSWD, and kubecon-eu-2023. So observability with service mesh. 
So standard setup is that just one cluster with service mesh. But what does observability really look like? So we would focus on a single cluster first, and we would deploy Istio and Prometheus, and visualize connections, and see how it really looks like. So let's see how deploying Istio control plane looks like. So looking at the cluster one at the bottom, you can see that there are only three uh, application containers. And with Istio control plane, you can see that Istio sidecar is injected. You might have to restart a few things, but that, that's the idea. And Istio control plane then connects to sidecars. And sidecar will get routing details, cut credentials, and metrics. And with that data plane, uh, Istio control plane, uh, sorry, there you go. Istio data plane can connect to each other. So that's the white lines here that Istio sidecars are connected to each other. So they can finally talk to each other and also have the metrics. And let's see how deploying metrics looks, uh, deploying Prometheus looks like. Deploying Prometheus would have Istio sidecar injected in this case. And how does it look like with the Prometheus um, retrieving metrics from each um, Istio sidecar or Envoy, um, Envoy sidecar? So the orange lines are added, and you can see that it's quite a bit happening in the in the, the diagram. And also just let's add ingress gateway. And ingress gateway doesn't have to be multi-cluster related, but it can be just ingress out from outside the cluster. And if you add that, it's quite a bit of moving parts, isn't it? So let's get into multi-cluster scenario a little bit more. So let's add another cluster and deploy separate Istio and Prometheus. So this is only one pattern out of many, and it's, it's not definitely not the silver bullet solution. But why do we do it? We have the, the better HA and higher uptime if you have multi-cluster, and we can do multi-cloud, multi-managed Kubernetes. If you, have, if you have only single cluster, you can only do so much, but if it, with the multiple clusters, you can do a few things more. And one of the things is that you can migrate one of the workloads from one cluster to the other while you're doing maintenance with one cluster, or you maybe you want to create a new cluster, uh, you have some region set up, stuff like that. One of the things that at Upside we do is that we also separate clusters based on sensitive information management. So we kind of separate, have a separate cluster for specific regulatory or auditory requirements. So that's just one of the ways that uh, multi-cluster can help. OK, multi-cluster, uh, what does it look like? So let's deploy Istio control plane and Prometheus together this time. Uh, not, too, like not so much different to the, the previous um, diagram. So it's essentially just sidecar added, Prometheus is added, in this case, another Prometheus in the cluster too. And deploying Istio ingress gateway, what does it look like? We definitely need that, that for multi-cluster in Istio environment. And let's connect that, uh, connect between cluster one and cluster two in this diagram. So this particular line, that these particular lines are only for cluster one to cluster two, and you can kind of visual, like kind of imagine how the connections would look like in the cluster two, having the same connections back to cluster one. Uh, it was just too many moving parts that. I just showed this. It's a bit too much for me. Uh, it was so much work to, to just get this, get this up, and I just didn't have the time to do the cluster two. So multi-cluster challenges. It's a lot of moving parts, and a few things that I want you to kind of keep take, like the key takeaways of multi-cluster challenges and what, I think, what, what to think about in multi-cluster scenarios. So first, first of all, inter-cluster metrics. So traffic leaves from cluster A to cluster B, cluster two, A to cluster C, cluster one to two, th two to three to four, and each cluster can have its own observability setup. You don't have to, you can, it's just a choice, but who will be responsible for inter-cluster metrics? If the traffic goes from cluster A to cluster B, is that the cluster A's problem? Is that the cluster B's problem? Who would need to gather the data, gather the metrics? And how can we ma merge multiple metrics from a, a number of clusters? In this diagram, it's just cl two clusters. But if you had like 10 clusters or hundreds of clusters, how do you make sure that you can actually merge them and use them in a meaningful way? 
Another challenge is cardinality, and cardinality is not a challenge by uh, for multi-cluster environment. It's more of a challenge observability as a whole. But service mesh definitely allows getting detailed metrics, and it's a definitely great um, aspects of having Istio and service mesh solutions. But it, it, there will be more if you have more clusters, obviously. That's an easy guess. And observability dashboard will be difficult to manage if you have that much data. So that's another thing that you have to consider. Maybe that you have single cluster, single solution, not so complicated, might be easy enough. But cardinality can be a difficult um, aspect as well. Give me one second. OK. And retention is the part that uh, I will be looking at a little bit more closely. So latest metrics can be fetched from running services, like Prometheus in this diagram. But metrics need to be retained for you know, meaningful historical anal analysis or investigations. And where and how should we store, them, store those data? Should we store that in a single location? Or should we store that next to the cluster? Or what kind of um, mechanism should we deploy? If the cardinality is too high, data retention costs can easily add up as well. And data source. So because it's a multi-cluster scenario, there could be one service deployed in the number of clusters. So you have application A, which might be deployed in cluster 1 and 2 and 3. And you might have cluster um, 4 and 5 and 6 having another different application. You need to differentiate which cluster has which application. So from that sense, dashboard needs to be aware. Like if you were to have a dashboard, and I think that's a part of the observability. But if you were to have dashboard, you have to have the data source um, for all the metrics, making sure that you know where the metrics are coming from. Metrics deduplication is something that you can work out. But if you don't have the data source, you might have the deduplication in the wrong way that you lose some data. So it's one of the things that you need to consider. And quick review on key projects. So we'll be looking at Istio. And I saw quite a few of us um, folks here are using Istio and some other solutions as well. But we'll be focusing on Istio just because at Upsider we are using Istio and have been using it for a while. Uh, the, the few things that you need to kind of focus on is the MTLS being the key part of the multi-cluster. Various multi-cluster models are definitely available for Istio, but we'll be looking at uh, just one specific solution because we don't have the time to go through all of that. And sidecar and ambient is something that's pretty hot right now, but I'm not going to be touching on that. Prometheus is another um, project that most of us probably use um, day to day. Uh, it's a graduated project from CNCF from 2018, and it's a second graduated project from following Kubernetes. Uh, we, would we would need to look at remote read and write APIs, and that's something that I will be touching on a little bit more. And also Prometheus Operator is something that I will be showing a little bit more. And Thanos is going to be the, the one that I'll be kind of focusing on. It's not the only solution for sure, but it's one of the easy um, kind of getting started long-term storage for Prometheus. And there is uh, this sidecar or receiver approach, and we'll be looking at one specific way uh, for Thanos usage. And let's go into solutions and demo. So the overview of the solution that I'll be demoing, it would be that we would have three clusters, three Kubernetes clusters, and those would be using kind clusters. So Istio, I'll be deploying with manifests. I'm not going to be using Istio control or other tools like Helm, uh, just because that's how upside we manage Istio installation. And we'll be looking at multi-primary on different networks. So there, is, there are a few other um, kind of models with multi-cluster. You can check them out in Istio official documentation. But we will be looking at multi-cluster with multi-primary on different networks. Strict MT MTLS is something that we will look at. And also, we will be using sidecar deployment. So I talked about ambient. And that's something that um, I'll be touching a little bit later on. And also with Istio, you can get started with you know demo profile. Oh, sorry, demo profile to um, to get the feeling of what Istio can do. But we'll be using non-demo profile so that it can kind of give you an idea what it would look like in production setup. And Prometheus, we'll be using deploy. Uh, we'll be using a Prometheus, Prometheus operator to deploy Prometheus Prometheus instances. And federation is one aspect that I will be looking at. Remote write will be used as well. And for Thanos, uh, deploying using Helm 
and using receiver rather than sidecar. So the demo time. So as I said, it's the same um, address, github.com, rytswd, kubecon eu 2023 That's the, the repository with um, all the details. And I haven't had the time to really refine it all, all, this, all the way through. So I'll be probably working for the rest of the, the kubecon to make sure that all the materials are there. But bear with me for now. So I think now, what can I, how can I? Can I use this mic? So you can hear me still? Yeah? yeah? Okay, great. Thank you. So in my repository, I'm going to run demo.sh. So let me just go back to the GitHub. So this should be public, kubecon-eu-2023. Dash dash and it's got a few things. And I'm going to be probably working on the demo steps and all the de details. But for today, because of the, the time limitation, I'll be running through with a script to make it just you know, easier to understand and easier to kind of walk through. And I don't have to copy paste on all of that. So with this repository set up, I'm just going to move back to my terminal. Is that too small? That's too small, isn't it? Is this big enough? Yeah? All right, so I'm going to start with demo.sh. And the script is going to just give me all the comments about what it does, what it would uh, try to do. Simple command, make directory and the CD into it. And this actually is already there. So I'm going to quickly show that what I have done before this. Uh, so I have created the Kubernetes uh, clusters. So kind clusters are already created uh, using uh, Sorry, another script called demo kind prep.sh. So I have created the temporary directory and created kind um, clusters. So that's something that you can do if you want to follow along. But for the time, um, the limitation of the time is just going to move on to the demo.sh, which is going to be about installing all the aspects about multi cluster observability. So let's see what we got in the, far, uh, the directory. So we just got uh, some kubeconfig, uh, some cluster definitions, cluster setup def definitions for kind, and meta LV setup, which is just uh, ma making sure that the kind can work as if a production cluster. Not really a production, but I, I think you know, you know what I mean. So with that, uh, let's just copy the demo repository uh, with the tar gz. And once that's in place, I don't have to do all the git and um, curl anymore. And first step is to create the CES certificates. So as I said, MTLS is an important aspect for multi-cluster. The two clusters, cluster one and cluster two, if we were have to have only two clusters, you still have to know that each cluster can securely connect to each other. So CS certificate, managing the certificates is one of the key aspects. And before getting into all the de installation, we just make sure that everything is uh, prepared. So first step is to uh, copy the script that's provided by Istio repository. Uh, Istio, Istio has this tools set, and I just copy that and make use of it. It's a make file, and then just make dash f, and then make, use the make file. And if I do that, I get the root certificate created, and I create three certificates for three clusters. So simple enough, just using make command for uh, three times with different names. And just take a few seconds to finish. And now we have all the certificates. You can follow along and t to see what the files are created, like what kind of files are created. Uh, should be really simple to follow. And because we need the certificates in place in, uh, before Istio installation, I just create namespaces for Istio before. And also make sure that the secrets are stored. So very simple, a uh, few files involved. So root certificate, uh, certificate chain, a CS certificate for each cluster. You can see the actual, like how the certificate lo certificates look like in each cluster, very similar, but obviously different, cl uh, different cluster, different um, certificate, but the same root certificate. And we can see that the CS certificate, um, CS certs, secret is created in the ACO namespace, 
And now we are ready for installation of Istio. And first of all, I said that I'm not going to be using Istio Control, and that was because I wanted to make sure that something that you can take away from this talk is that go to the repository, you can see the actual um, manifest rather than some um, magic happening behind the scenes. So what I do is that I have copied the, the repository, so I'm just taking the manifest dire uh, directory and then manifest slash Istio slash installation has all the files. And with those files, um, oh, sorry. Before that, I need to label Istio system namespace with the network topology. So as I said, I'll be looking at three different uh, clusters with different network. So multi-primary with different network is something that I'll be focusing on. And from that sense, I need to make sure that labeling namespace is in place before installation. And that's part of the official documentation as well. So simple enough, uh, Istio system, just na label that namespace with the topology of each cluster. Labeled, and now we can install Istio D. And is, that, that means Istio control plane. And uh, keeps control apply with the context of each cluster, and then just take out that Istio slash installation slash Istio D manifest that you can find in the repository. So this is really fast, but you can see quite a few errors happening. And this is because that CRDs are part of the definitions together. So there's a bit of race condition. So if I do apply twice. I would, I would answer that question later on. And you can see that the files are created. And there was a question about Istio control. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. And install Istio gateway in each cluster. And this one is also another um, configurations already in place. The, the manifests are all, all in Istio slash installation slash Istio gateway manifest. And just create this. And this one is pretty straightforward. All the CRDs are already in place. And we move on to establishing multi-cluster connection. So first of all, copy the gateway resources um, that we'll be using for each of the, the cluster. So similar slash Isti manifest slash istio slash usage this time, and then we will look at cross network gateway.yaml as well. It's a simple, uh, sim simple file uh, with just a couple of things uh, for istio to know that the multi-cluster communication work. So the resource gateway is created with this for each cluster. And we will move on, move on to creating remote secret. So this one, another one, um, Sorry, so for creating a remote secret, you have to have a connection between clusters, but you do it one by one. Cluster one connecting to cluster two, cluster two connecting to cluster one, so on and so forth. And this particular one is going to be cluster one to cluster two. And there was a question about Istio control. I'm not using Istio control because there is a lot happening behind the scenes, and it just feels really nice to get started with Istio, but what I wanted to show is that what actually happens behind the scenes, and not exactly uh, to just rely on the tools, but kind of have a bit of understanding of what service mesh really looks like. So this one is also using cube control. You can use Istio control to create remote secret, but because I have the kind clusters with the cube config that you could see with the prep for the another script, we have this um, Istio, sorry, Kubernetes configuration in the file. So we'll be using uh, keep control with uh, create secret uh, using the, the same kind of convention with Istio create remote secret and creating the secret and also annotating and labeling it. So that's what happens with Istio control. We'll probably um, not use cube control for everything for production use, but this is something that maybe it's interesting to see what actually happens behind the scenes. And we do that for cluster two to cluster one. So you can kind of see the pattern, okay, cluster one to cluster two, and then cluster two to cluster one, same thing. And cluster one to cluster three. So as I said, there are three clusters. So cluster one now can talk to cluster three with this remote secret. And cluster two can also talk to cluster three with this secret. There you go. And I'm not going to do cluster three out to cluster one and two, because you can. You can just omit it. You can say that cluster three doesn't need to talk to cluster one and two. You can do it 
it really depends on business use cases. So for that reason, I'm just going to skip it so that it's, it's something that's possible. And you might have some um, data protection issues or protection uh, requirements like us uh, that you might want to have specific connection one way, but not the both ways. So the next step is Prometheus, not Istio. So install multi-cluster Prometheus setup is next up. And first of all, creating monitoring namespace. Can be anything, just name the monitoring for now. I think it's one of the you know, easy to understand namespaces. And label the ma namespace, making sure that Istio knows about it. Istio knows how to inject, about, um, inject the sidecars to each of the, the ports there. Labeled with Istio injection. If you have a revision, um, you might have a different net label, but this should be um, straightforward for sim um, should be the s simple setup for now. And copy all Prometheus related definitions from the repository once again. And Prometheus operator is something that we will be using, and we are using customized builds. Prometheus operator is very simple to install usually, so you don't have to do this customized build. But this specific case, I'm installing Prometheus operator into monitoring namespace rather than default namespace. So if you do use Prometheus operator as default, it goes to default namespace. It might work for you, it might not work for you. Maybe that's something that you can kind of check out how it works. It's very simple, but just wanted to make sure that nothing gets, like nothing gets in the way into the def default namespace. So that's applied for cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. And that was just deploying Prometheus operator. Now I need to deploy Prometheus itself. And I'm starting with Prometheus for collecting Istio metrics. And I say that because I'll be deploying two different types of metric, uh, Prometheus. So first of all is Prometheus Istio metrics collection. And it will be directly connecting to Istio. And I get that Prometheus setup with Prometheus operator, so I'm using CRDs for that. And deploying Prometheus for federation. And this helps with the cardinality. This helps kind of the retention setup. So it's another um, Prometheus CRD setup, uh, CRD configurations. So that's why I started to use uh, Prometheus operator, so that I can kind of similar, have a similar setup for Prometheus collection, Istio collection, and also Istio federation. And now it's installing Thanos. So Thanos is, as I said, it's a retention mechanism. But in this case, I'm installing Thanos only to cluster three, not to other clusters. Do I have time? Oh, I don't have too much time. Um, so Helm install uh, with uh, just directly from Bitnami and receiving uh, receiver set enabled to true. And straightforward, just Helm install. So very simple from other aspects. And if everything goes well, it's there. So I didn't install Thanos for cluster one and cluster two. The idea is that this particular solution is to try to connect Prometheus instances, especially the federation ones, to cluster three. So it's a bit difficult to remember what cluster is what. But cluster three was the only one who had, which had Thanos. Um, this is to kind of demo that Prometheus in other clusters can send all the, tra all the metrics into single um, observability cluster, kind of central observability cluster. That's one, one way to manage the really, you know, a lot of moving parts with a lot of moving metrics. So that's done with the demo uh, script. So let's see uh, what the cluster looks like. So cluster three was the one that has um, Thanos in. And if I can see how the processes look like. Thanos is just starting up. So meanwhile, let's just do cluster one, which is, which has Prometheus and uh, Prometheus Istio collector, Istio federation, and uh, operator as well. And this Istio federation will be talking to a Thanos receiver, which is up and running right in the cluster kind cluster three right now. So let's see what it looks like with uh, Thanos query front end. What I'm going to do is to go into query front end, going to port forward with the query front end specifically. So it's a bit difficult to see. But uh, 10902 is the, the port for the 
web UI. And if I can go back to localhost host 10902. And so if I do Istio requests and some metrics coming through, and if I execute this, you can see the metrics coming through. But there is a problem with this demo that I need to work out uh, so that you can see that the cluster showing up as cluster three, I think. But I don't have anything coming from cluster one or two. So there is a bit of service mesh setup problem that I have encountered in like past few hours. Um, so I will try to fix it by the end of the KubeCon, but um, sorry about this. Um, the demo, I knew that demo was not going to work. And, you know, it's a lot of moving parts, but I think you can get the sense that Prometheus and Thanos can definitely work out to help the kind of metric setup. And the idea is, um, the idea about central observability setup is something that you might be able to use. It might not be the right solution, but that's just one way. So, going back to, I don't have too much time, so going back to the slide. Um, so, a bit of a summary. So, quick recap on what I, ha like what I have shown you with the demo. So, there are a lot of, lot of moving parts, and I couldn't really get hold of moving parts and just couldn't, like, basically failed with it. But, you know, a few clusters. I only had three clusters, and that already was a lot. It was a lot to go through all the steps, and if you have more clusters, it will be a really difficult to comprehend. Multi-cluster is definitely made easy by service mesh, but it doesn't really solve everything. It still definitely certainly has the focus on supporting multi-cluster scenarios, a few different ways, but observability is still complicated. Service mesh is only a part of story, and it is not a solution by itself. You have to still configure a few things about observability. Solution with central observability cluster was something that we looked at, and is one of the many uh, options for multi-cluster environment, but it, it is probably easiest to kind of wrap your head around what, it, what happens with it. Uh, Multi-cluster observability challenges. Um, I'll be putting more challenges with the, um, for more details, and you can check out the demo setup in the um, repository. And just a quick few alternatives that I need to mention. And uh, Cilium, Envoy, and Linkerd are definitely service mesh solutions that you can definitely use. Um, I just was familiar, most familiar with Istio, so that's what I stuck with. And Thanos was the only, you know, just used uh, for demo purpose. And I don't say that it's not production ready, definitely production um, usable, but um, you can have a look at other options as well, Cortex, Grafana, Mimir, and others. Other considerations that I didn't have the time to touch on is that alert management is something that uh, will be really difficult to kind of manage. So alerts should be managed per cluster in general, but what happens if you have a central management, uh, central observability cluster? Do you want to have another setup? Maybe that's another possibility that you can cons consider. Configuration management, we could see that there were quite a few steps in the script, and maybe GitOps or some solutions would be helpful. Other observability aspects um, like we, I didn't touch on, and service mesh specific solutions like Yali uh, for Istio, Hubble for Cilium is definitely to be looked at. Multi-tenancy, there was a talk right next door, I don't know which way, uh, about, about multi-tenancy, so if you're keen about multi-tenancy, you know, please do have a look at that recording there. And open telemetry is something that I couldn't touch, and sidecar or sidecar less solutions is something that will be a kind of a big focus in the service mesh ecosystem, and there will be quite a few talks in KubeCon. So with that, just a quick appendix. Um, there are some talks about service mesh, open telemetry, uh, observability, and all of that, so maybe something that you'll be interested to join after this. And some references once again, so repository is that. Uh, I'll be putting the link to the slide, and slide is available at, with w.sh, KubeCon EU, 2023, MCO stands for Multi-Cluster Observability. And special thanks to the team uh, with me from AppSider, helping with the presentation and slide decks. And with that, thank you very much for the time, and that's it. I think there is no time for questions, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there was time for it, so thank you very much.